Subhanak Ya Rabb that all of his creation be it the earth be it the ocean be it the trees be it the animals be it insane be it the jinn be it the prophets be it the angels be it Jibreel be it Israfil everything is dead except Allah Azza wa Jal everything is dead everything is dead except Allah Azza wa Jal nothing moves nothing stops nothing makes and nothing breaks except by his will Subhanak Ya Rabb this dunya millions of light cheese you know those little dots they're millions of light cheese away millions some of them don't even exist anymore but their light is traveling so far a distance it could have died a million years ago and you will continue to see its light that's how far away it is subhanak ya rab subhanak ya rab rasulullah sallam told his companions I see what you don't see and I hear what you don't hear. Verily the heavens, verily the heavens have squeaked, they're creaking, overloaded. He says there isn't room for four fingers. There isn't room for four fingers except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. Except there is an angel in prostration to Allah subhanak ya Rabb. Is Allah not perfect? Is Allah not perfect? Everything he does is perfect. His creation is perfect. His Nabi is perfect. His Deen is perfect. His Rahma is perfect. And my brothers, his punishment is perfect. On the day of judgment, when all of man, from Adam to the last of them, will stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, and all of the jinn, they will stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal on a day that is 50,000 years long. And the sun will be a mile. The the, 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 the one who narrates the hadith says, I didn't understand what Rasulullah meant. Did he mean a mile? Meaning the stick the Arabs used to use to put kahla. They used to call this a meal. He says, I don't know if Rasulullah was, was he referring to this? Or was he referring to the distance of a mile? The sun will be a mile on top of your heads. And we will be drowning in our own sweats. And Allah Azza wa Jal will call. He will call for more Jahannam to be brought forward. He will call upon the angels to bring forward hellfire. Picture this. Picture this. 70,000 ropes. Each rope has 70,000 angels. That's 4.9 billion. 4.9 billion angels. And they will drag Nar Jahannam forward. They will bring it as they have been commanded. They will bring it forward. And we will be watching. We will be watching. When Nur Jahannam sees the disbelievers and the sinners for the first time, it will burst in anger. It will burst in anger. Such a sound. Allah is perfect in everything He does and He's perfect in His punishment. 
What can I tell you about Lord Jahannam? What can I tell you? Rasulullah sallallahu was sitting with his companions and I heard a sound. He says to them, did you hear that? I said to him, yes, ya Rasulullah. He said to him, do you know what it is? I said to him, Wallahu Rasul Alam. He said to him, this is a rock that was thrown into hellfire 70 years ago and only now did it reach the bottom. Only now did it reach the bottom. How big? 4.9 billion. But that's not the scary thing. Allah Azza wa Jal is promising Lord Jahannam that you will be full. I will fill you up. Halim Talabdi, he says to it. Are you full? Is there any more room? And it says to him, Almin Mazid, bring it on. Is there any more? Is there any more? This is what I was designed for. This is what I was created for. Bring them on. Is there any more? The least. The least, the least, the least. Punishment in hell fire is a man will be made to stand on two burning coals. He will be made to stand and his brain will boil. And the miskin thinks that he's copying the worst punishment. He thinks he's copying the worst punishment. Rasulullah said, this is the least. The least punishment. What was it, Ya Rasulullah? The least punishment. Your brain will boil. Allah is perfect in everything He does. He is perfect in His creation. He is perfect in His Rahmah. And He is perfect in His, in His punishment. Do not delay. Do not delay. This is an opportunity that was given to you by Allah Azza wa Jal. He brought you here. He gave you this opportunity. My brother, do not go back to Sydney in the same condition you came. Ya nara. Oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your families from hellfire. It's fuel will be men and stones. Do not delay. This is the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us all. And forgive us all. Inshallah. Amen. Amen. Allah, brothers, after these beautiful talks and reminders, that I know that none of you doubt that each one of these brothers had spoken from their heart. I know that these talks are coming straight from the heart to the heart. And every single one of us now is sitting down and comprehending and thinking. And say, you know what, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. But what's next? What's next? Are we going to go back after what we've heard? After this beautiful feeling that some of us never ever felt this beautiful feeling ever in their lives. Wallahi, there are people dying just to get this feeling that you are getting right now. Why is it you that at this camp? Why is it me that Allah had gathered us here tonight? On a night which is night full of corruption, people disobey Allah. Drink alcohol, commit sex and do this and do that. And Allah Azza wa Jalla wanted this group of believers to get together for the sake of Allah, to remind themselves of Allah, to remind themselves about the day of judgment, to remind themselves about the love of Allah and His Messenger. Why is it me? Why is it you that we're here? Isn't that alone? Isn't that alone worth to be, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the day of judgment? Doesn't Allah Azza wa Jalla deserve to be thanked? 
I ask you about Allah, is your Lord Allah worthy of being disobeyed? Does Allah deserve that disobedience? Does Allah deserve that negligence? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserve us turning away from Him? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserve us not worshipping Him?